Welcome to Chillax Japan. In this channel, I will introduce a wide range of Japanese culture, history, Japanese language, food, game, etc. But just like a radio, so just relax and listen to it before or while you sleep. In this channel, I will upload useful information about Japan and info that will improve your life. So please subscribe to my channel, Chillax Together. Ninja and Shinobi difference. Ninja and Shinobi are terms that are often used interchangeably, but there are some subtle differences between the two. Ninja, the world ninja, is a term that has come to be associated with a specific type of covert agent or mercenary in feudal Japan who has trained in tactics of unconventional warfare and espionage and assassination. They were known for their stealth and ability to blend in with their surroundings. Shinobi, the world shinobi, is a more historical term that refers to a type of covert agent or mercenary who was trained in similar skills as the ninja. The term shinobi is often used to refer to the traditional ninja, while the term ninja is more commonly used in popular culture. In summary, the terms ninja and shinobi refer to similar concepts, but the term shinobi is more historically accurate while the term ninja is more widely recognized and associated with popular culture. Mmm, so there is not much difference. By the way, have you ever heard of the word ninja? Basically, I guess we only call them ninja in our daily life. Anyways, now that you know the difference, however, aren't you wondering how the term came about? Here, I'd like to explain a little bit about the reason for this. Why Ninja and Shinobi was born? The ninja or shinobi were a class of covert agents and mercenaries in feudal Japan who were trained in espionage, sabotage, and assassination. The origins of the ninja can be traced back to the Heian period, 794-1185. Do you know Heian? Heian was the age of high aesthetic consciousness when local lords hired skilled warriors to gather intelligence and carry out covert operations. As Japan uh, transitioned from the uh, Heian to the Kamakura period, 1185-1333, the samurai class emerged as the dominant military force, and the need for covert operations grew. This led to the development of the ninja as a specialized class of warriors skilled in stealth and espionage. The ninja were employed by a variety of patrons, including daimyo, feudal lords, shogun, military governors, and religious institutions. They were often used to gather intelligence, carry out sabotage and assassination missions, and provide protection. In the centuries that followed, the ninja became a symbol of Japanese culture and were often depicted in popular culture as secretive, powerful warriors. Although their role in Japanese history was often controversial, the ninja are now widely recognized as an important part of Japanese cultural heritage. Secret of a Ninja Okay, so let me tell you about the secret world of Japanese ninjas. These guys were basically like secret agents or spies who would sneak around and gather intel or take out their enemies. They were trained in all sorts of cool stuff like martial arts, disguise and espionage. One of the things that made them so special was their ability to move around unnoticed. They were masters of stealth and could blend into their surroundings like Cameron's. They would wear all black outfits and special shoes that were designed to make them more silently. The thing is, a lot of what we think we know about ninjas comes from movies and TV shows, and some of it just made up. The truth is, they were different kinds of ninjas and they each 
had their own specialties. Some were great fighters, while others were more like intelligence gatherers. Another thing to keep in mind is that the ninja lifestyle was a lot harder than it looks on screen. They had to be in top physical condition and were trained to endure all sorts of pain and discomfort. But despite all of that, they remained committed to their missions and were like willing to risk their lives to get the job done. So they have it, the hidden story of Japanese ninjas. They were a fascinating group of people who lived in a world of secrecy and danger. Here, I like to explain why this ninja is a little bit misunderstood by modern society. The image of ninjas. The image of ninjas in popular culture is often romanticized and exaggerated. As a result, it can be far from accurate. Some of the common misconceptions about ninjas include Number 1. Ninjas always wore black clothing. In reality, ninjas would often wear dark colors to blend into the night, but they would also wear other colors, such as brown or green, to blend into their surroundings during the day. Number two, ninjas were always assassins. While ninjas were sometimes hired for assassination missions, their skill set was much broader than that. They were also trained in espionage, sabotage, and guerrilla warfare, and they were often used for these purposes instead of or in addition to assassination. Number three, ninjas had supernatural powers. The idea of ninjas having supernatural powers, such as the ability to turn invisible, is a popular one in popular culture, but it's not the best in fact. Ninjas relied on their skills and training to carry out their missions, not on any magical abilities. And number four, ninjas were always solitary figures. While ninjas were often associated with the concept of the lone warrior, they often worked in groups and had a strong sense of community and camaraderie with their fellow ninjas. These misconceptions about ninjas have contributed to a distorted and inaccurate image of ninjas in popular culture. While ninjas are often depicted as cool and mysterious characters in movies, television shows, and video games, the reality of their lives and their abilities was much more complex and nuanced. Why ninja is so attractive? Hey, the ninja are pretty cool, right? There are a few reasons why people are drawn to them. First off, their stealthy and sneaky tactics make them seem super mysterious and alluring. Who wouldn't want to be a master of disguise and able to slip in and out of places undetected? Second, their reputation as expert assassins and warriors adds to their allure. People are drawn to the idea of a skilled fighter who can take down their enemies with precision and grace. Third, the ninja have been romanticized in pop culture through movies, TV shows, video games, and often uh, other media. This has only added to their uh, mystique and uh, made them even more fascinating to people. And finally, the ninja's connection to Japanese culture and history is appealing to many. The idea of being part of an ancient warrior tradition is intriguing, and the ninja's role in Japanese society has both feared and respected, makes them even more alluring. So all of these factors combined make the ninja one of the coolest figures in history and a popular topic of fascination for many people. So from here, I'm going to tell you some interesting history about ninjas, okay? The most impactful story about ninja. One of the most impactful stories about Japanese ninja is the legend of the 47 Ronin. In 1701, a feudal lord named Asano Naganori was insulted by a high-ranking official named Kira Yoshinaka. Asano drew his sword and attacked. Q. 
killer, but only manages to wound him before being apprehended by the authorities. As a punishment, Asano was ordered to commit seppuku ritual suicide, and his property was confiscated. Asano's samurai retainers were left without a lord and were forced to become ronin or masterless samurai. They were deeply loyal to Asano and wanted to avenge his death, but they knew that an open attack on Kira would be met with severe punishment. Instead, they turned to be a group of ninjas from the neighboring Koga and Iga provinces for help. After months of careful planning and preparation, the 147 Ronin launched a surprise attack on Kira's mansion. They were led by Oishi Kuranosuke, one of the、uh, Asano's most trusted retainers, and were supported by a team of Koga and Iga ninjas. The attack was successful, and Kira was killed without any of the Ronin being seriously injured. The Ronin then turned themselves into the authorities and were ordered to commit seppuku as a punishment for their crime. However, their act of loyalty and vengeance had captured the imagination of the Japanese people, and they were celebrated as heroes. The story of the 47 Ronin has been retold in various forms, including plays, books, and movies, and it has become a symbol of the samurai code of. Honor and loyalty. It is a testament to the enduring fascination with the world of Japanese ninjas and their place in Japanese history and culture. The most impactful story about Ninja No. 2, Hattori Hanzo, is a legendary figure in the world of Japanese ninjas, and his story is steeped in mystery and intrigue. Hanzo was a samurai who lived during the Sengoku period of Japanese history. He is believed to have been a member of the Iga ninja clan, which was known for its highly skilled warriors and resistance against the powerful Oda clan. Hanzo was a key ally of Tokugawa Ieyasu, one of the most powerful figures of the Sengoku period. He is said to have played a crucial role in Ieyasu's rise to power. Including the Battle of Sekigahara in 1600. One of the most famous stories about Hanzo involves his role in protecting Ieyasu during the siege of Osaka in 1615. According to legend, Hanzo and a team of ninja warriors were tasked with infiltrating Osaka Castle and assassinating Ieyasu's enemy, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Hanzo and his team were able to sneak into the castle undetected, but when they reached Hideyoshi's quarters, they found that he had already committed suicide. Hanzo then cut off Hideyoshi's head and returned it to Ieyasu as proof of his success. Another intriguing aspect of Hanzo's story is his reputation as a master swordsmith. He is said to have created swords of exceptional quality and craftsmanship, which were highly prized by samurai and ninja alike. The true extent of Hanzo's abilities and achievements remains a subject of debate among historians and enthusiasts of Japanese history and culture. Some view him as a larger than life hero and a symbol of the ninja's resourcefulness and bravery. While others believed that he has been mythologized over the years and the many of the stories about him are exaggerated or fictional, regardless of the truth behind the legend, Hattori Hanzo remains a fascinating and energetic figure whose story continues to capture the imagination of the people around the world. This is great, isn't it? I think it was a Japanese NES game of anime. It was called Hattori Kun. The most impactful story about Ninja No. 3. It's difficult to say what the most emotional story in Ninja history might be, as much of the history surrounding Ninja and their actions has been lost over time or deliberately shrouded in secrecy. However, here is a story that might interest you.
There's a story about a ninja named Mochizuki Chiyome who lived during the、uh, Sengoku period in Japan, 16th century. She was known for her beauty and、uh, intelligence and was married to a high ranking samurai. However, after her husband died, Chiyome found herself in a difficult situation. Women at the time were often seen as property with little agency or power, and she faced the possibility of being married off to someone else she didn't know or love. Chiyome saw an opportunity to use her skills and resources to help other women in similar situations. She used her wealth and connections to create a secret network of female ninja who were trained in self defense and espionage. These women were sent on missions to gather intelligence, protect their families and communities, help other women who were in need. Chiyome's ninja were known for their bravery and their dedication to their cause, and they helped to empower women. At a time when they were often seen as weaker and less important than men. While this story is not necessarily well documented or verifiable, it's still an interesting and inspiring tale that shows how one woman used her skills and resources to make a difference in the lives of the others. Whether it's、uh, the most emotional story in ninja history、uh, for interpretation, but it certainly is a powerful one. Finally, I'd like to introduce some ninjutsu, ninja techniques to show how the ninja used to fight. Ninjutsu is a Japanese martial art that was historically practiced by ninja covert agents in feudal Japan. The art of ninjutsu involves a variety of skills such as stealth, espionage, disguise, and unconventional warfare. Ninjutsu is often associated with practices like stealthily infiltrating enemy territory, gathering intelligence, and carrying out sabotage or assassination missions. The ninjas were also skilled in a wide range of weapons such as throwing stars, shuriken, knives, and nunchak. In modern times, ninjutsu has evolved into a sport and a system of self defense. Many martial arts schools now offer classes in ninjutsu, which typically include training in techniques such as rolling, falling, grappling, and striking. Some schools also incorporate elements of traditional Japanese weapons training into their curriculum. It's important to note that while ninjutsu has a rich history and a cultural significance, It should only be practiced under the guidance of a qualified instructor in a safe and uncontrolled environment. About dangerous ninjutsu. Ninjutsu is a martial art that encompasses various techniques and skills, including espionage, infiltrating, disguise, assassination, and hand to hand combat. One ninjutsu technique that is often considered particularly dangerous is koppo jutsu. Which is a system of bone breaking techniques that aims to incapacitate or kill an opponent quickly and efficiently. Koppo jutsu techniques involve striking or manipulating pressure points, joints, and other vulnerable areas of the body, causing immense pain and dislocation or even fractures. Another technique that could be considered dangerous is kuji in. Which involves using hand gestures and mantras to channel energy and intention towards a specific goal, such as self defense or attack. Kuji in techniques were used by ninja to increase their physical and mental strength, as well as to create illusions or distract their opponents. However, It's important to note that ninjutsu was not solely focused on violent techniques, and many other aspects of the art were devoted to espionage, stealth, and deception. Ninjas were often tasked with gathering information and intelligence, sabotaging enemy operations, and creating diversions to aid their allies. Okay, in addition, I'd like to make a bonus talk here at the end. Sightseeing s p o t in Japan related to ninja. Japan has a rich history and culture, 
and there are several tourist attractions related to ninjas and their traditions. Here are a few popular ones. Number one, Ninja Village Igawe no. This is a theme park and a museum dedicated to the history of ninjas. It is located in the city of Iga, which is considered the birthplace of ninjas. Visitors can see live demonstrations of ninja techniques, try on ninja costumes, and learn about the tools and weapons used by ninjas. And number two, Naruto Whirlpool World. This is a popular sightseeing spot located in the Naruto Strait in Japan. The whirlpools are created by the strong tidal currents in the area, and they are said to have been used by ninjas to train in the art of survival and escape. And number three, Aizu Bukeyashiki. This is a former samurai mansion located in the city of Aizu Wakamatsu. The mansion has been converted into a museum and features exhibits on the history of ninjas and samurai, as well as demonstrations of ninja and samurai techniques. And number four, Osaka Castle. This is a popular tourist destination located in Osaka. It's said that the castle was designed with the ninjas in mind. It features several defenses and escape routes that were designed to protect against ninja attacks. These are just a few examples of the many tourist attractions in Japan that are related to ninjas and their traditions. If you are interested in learning more about the uh, fascinating aspect of Japanese history, there are many other sites and museums to visit throughout the country. So today I have summarized the uh, ninja, but if you have any questions, please feel free to comment or ask. My diary, thank you!